Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Shooter and welcome to the next part of my post processing secrets to go through all of the settings for each individual post processing in real time. And today we're going to be focusing on Bloom and I'm sure everybody is aware of Bloom. And if you knock that setting up too high, it becomes a supernova bright spot for every light or every bright area you have. So in this, you can change intensity to thresholds, the soft knee clamp diffusion, anthropomorphic ratio, color, fast mode, texture, and intensity. And we'll go through all these today and you can let me know what you think. And I do have a tutorial for you to be able to watch if you need to install the post-processing and I'll leave that in the description and a video to explain fully about post-processing effects and or if you want a general overview of how to be able to program at runtime. But stick with me today and we'll learn it all. Be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 135 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else, including this package, which includes all of the settings with visual representation for all of the different post-processing effects. And be sure to check out all the links in the description for all the Humble Bundles and Unity sales at the minute to save tens of thousands of dollars on all the great assets across game dev. Throw a like on this video and make sure you subscribe to always be kept up to date. You need the using unityengine.rendering.postprocessing and unityengine.ui as the namespaces to access what we want. And then you want two private variables, one for the post -process volume that we're going to name underscore processing volume and the bloom effect or any other effect that you want because you can replace this specific name. I'm just going to add a UI header so I can have the different text elements that are going to update when I move the slider, but this is not relevant to you necessarily. And then you need to have the post processing volume equal to get component post -process volume, which as long as this script is on your post processing volume, that's fine. If not, you would have to make this a something that you can add to the inspector. And then you can use post processing volume dot profile dot try get settings out and then whatever your bloom variable is so we can access that. And of course, I'll explain this more in the general video that's in my description. Then if you want to turn bloom on and off, we have public void bloom on off. We'll then have bool on. So then you can say that if it's on or if it's true at any point, we'll say underscore bloom dot active is equal to true. And then under here, we can have an else statement and we'll say underscore bloom dot active is equal to false. So I've created a little list of things that we want to be able to affect within this post processing effect. So if in this case we want to affect the intensity, it's going to be on a slider in our case, or it's going to be just a number. So I'll public void intensity. I'll have this as flow, just the slider value that we're going to add. Underscore bloom dot intensity dot value is equal to the slider value. And then I can just add a line in to update the text if I so want. And then it's just going to be whatever text dot text is equal to the slider value dot to string. That's our intensity. And then we're going to do pretty much the same for the threshold because it is also a number. So instead of having intensity, we can just call this threshold have it same with the slider value. Instead of having intensity, we can have threshold. And then again, you can update your text. So we've done threshold because all you need to do is bloom dot and you can find out the different names. You can hold control and left click on say bloom dot threshold to so the threshold here. And you'll see that we have the actual parameters that it uses. So intensity, threshold, soft knee, diffusion, and all the things in there. So now we want to do soft knee in the exact same way. We'll rename the method and just have this as soft knee dot value. And again, because clamp is just a number, this could be set in any way you like, but in our case, we can do the same thing again, that bloom dot clamp dot value is equal to the value that we want to create. And you could set this to a specific value. And then again, the same for bloom dot diffusion dot value and bloom dot anamorphic ratio. The only difference here is that if we've got, we want to set the color, we can say public void set color in our case, we'll name this and then we'll call this an integer index that if we want to change this on UIs, we might want to say that then we use a switch case statement and we can say that in brackets, we can use the index. And then from there, we can say how many cases we want. So case zero is going to be bloom dot color dot value is equal to whatever color you want to set it to. So white's the default and we can add a break in there. Then what you could do is you could set that to the, as many other cases as you want in your dropdown to be able to set its specific colors. Now, if you didn't have that, you could create a new variable at the top, which is just say like the color picker. So you could just have it as a variable of color 
you can set this parameter here equal to whatever variable that you're going to use. And then we're going to look at doing a tick box for fast bloom. And this is really similar to what we had for the bloom on and off. In this case, we can just change it to fast mode. Whether it's on, we can say bloom dot fast mode dot value is equal to true. Bloom dot fast mode dot value is equal to false. Now, the only difference in this entire thing for referencing different items is that actually the dirt texture that we need to set. So if we say public void dirt texture, well, depending on however we want to set this, so we can say underscore bloom dot dirt texture, as you can imagine, and we're going to set that equal to a new variable that we're going to create. So up at the top, what I want to be able to do is I'm just going to create a new variable. I'm just going to write it serialized field private. But in this instance, it's got to be texture parameter because this is the parameters that are used for specific post processing. And then we could call this our custom dirt texture. And then we can copy that and, and paste that down below and set that equal to the bloom dirt texture is equal to that new texture that we can specify in the inspector. And then remember, if you want to set the dirt intensity, you can do it in exactly the same way and set the bloom dot dirt intensity dot value is equal to whatever you want that to be equal to. We can click on our post processing volume, add our entire bloom test script, and you can see that my custom dirt texture is a drop down, and we can choose the value, which is the texture and whether it's black, white, transparent or whatever default state that it has. And then if you need to attach those to any of our post processing parameters, select our on and off toggle, add the post processing volume object and make sure we choose, depending on the script that we have, we can choose the bloom test and choose bloom on and off because it'll just be the dynamic floats that we want to use for an intensity slider. Do the same thing, add the post processing volume, add the drop down for the bloom test or whatever script you've created and make sure that you use the intensity or whatever you've named your item. But then if you've got a drop down for say setting the color, you need to do exactly the same way and choose the set color method. But then you want to create the options that you would have for whatever color you want to set them to. Unless of course, in your script in the inspector, you've got a color picker that you've got, which you want to set it at a certain point. Maybe when you click a button, it's entirely up to you. And you can just do that to your tick boxes, sliders, and whatever else you need. And when you press play, you can press on, you can adjust intensities, thresholds, the softness, the diffusion, what color you would have of your bloom settings, and so on and so forth, depending on what you want to achieve. So let me know what you think and any suggestions that you want to make, because I'm always happy to listen to you guys. So be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 135 different scripts, assets, and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Come and join me on Discord if you want to chat. Check out my great assets on the Unity Asset Store with bonus discounts on my website to save on VAT, big discounts with coupon codes there too. And thank you so much to all my patrons. Big thanks to Peter Steiner and everybody else who subscribes to the videos. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.